Fine. I'm wearing a Santa hat. Are you happy? Hello, my baby! Hello, my honey! Hello, my rag, my gal! Send me a kiss, my wife! Baby, my heart's on fire! We review combine. I mean, Power of the Prime's Deluxe Jazz. One of about four figures from this line that seems to have hit stores a bit early. Merry Christmas, mortal scum. Ahem, <clears throat> Power of the Primes is more or less a continuation of Combiner Wars and a chance for Hasbro to reuse some of the molds from that line yet again. Jazz has been a staple member of the Autobots from the very beginning in Generation 1. He turned into a race car, but was best known for his love of Earth-style Muzak and pop-out hip speakers. He spoke with a lot of Earth-style slang that was at one point considered to be hip. The figure can easily be seen inside the plastic along with the included accessories. Character art is on the front, on the side panel, a peek at the combiner that will eventually be formed. Both modes are shown off on the back, and Power of the Primes line now includes diagrams showing how to use the armor accessory, and where to stick the Prime Master accessory. Once those become available in stores, the bio reads, How will the improvisational Autobot Special Ops agent wield the Power of the Primes? My guess is that he will stick it in his chest and stand on a shelf for a long time. But let us remove Jazz from his box and review him properly. <laughs> Jazz comes out of the box with his instruction manual and a collectible trading card that says what would happen if he paired up with Prime Master Alchemist. Alchemist the Jazz defeats enemies with spontaneous matter disruption. Well, if it's spontaneous, how does he cause it? Ugh. There is also the Prime Armor slash Hand accessory. And one Gun Weapon accessory. Generation 1 Jazz was a sporty race car, and Power of the Prime's Deluxe Jazz remains faithful. Thankfully, he is not a remolded Stunticon, using the Breakdown or Dead End mold, as so very many other figures did in Combiner Wars. This is an entirely new mold with its own uniqueness. As such, it seems to have just a touch more detailing than the Combiner Wars cars did. Perhaps they learned their lessons on detailing after Titan's Return Deluxes showed the way. The colors just seem a little crisper, with a vivid clean base white, blue stripes, and some black highlights. There is plenty of detailing, and the paint applications are very clean. So it kind of blows his cover when it says Autobot Jazz right there on his side decal. There are even Cybertronian letters on his decals, though I'll leave it to the snowflakes to translate those. He rolls well on smooth surfaces and holds up together fairly well under regular handling. Though you should be careful when handling Jazz because some of the plastic on some of the panels seems a bit thinner with both the tabs and the grooves. Especially around the robot arms, it feels like there's a potential for breakage if handled too roughly, or forced when transforming. The gun will plug into either one of these holes on the sides of the car, or on the very top. Ditto for the prime armor accessory. And there is enough clearance on the back of the car to have it rotated forwards or backwards, depending on whether or not you want it to look like an extra engine, or jet thrusters. The plug on the Prime Armor accessory can be removed, and any Prime Master or Titan Master can be inserted into the revealed cavity. The plastic plug can also be jammed to any one of these holes as a, another accessory of sorts. Transforming from car to leg mode is perhaps easiest. Simply untab the entire upper half of the car, you will see that it swivels out and up on this extendable hinge. Fold it down thusly. You will see tabs here on the insides of the doors, and grooves at the sides of the car at the rear. Push tab and groove together until they hold firmly in place. Then you just rotate up the combiner peg, 
Then plug in any Combiner Wars or Power of the Primes foot accessory into this hole at the bottom. The instructions say to take the gun and plug it into this hole, which I suppose serves to cover this ugly gap. And here is Jazz as a leg. Unlike with Dinobot Slug, which tapers at the bottom, this one has a really proper, thick, boot-like appearance, even though the inside of the leg is mostly hollow. But he is proportioned to work with any of the Combiner Wars gestalts, and interchanges freely with any Combiner that you may wish to make. Transforming from leg to arm is again the simplest method. Take off the weapon accessory, remove the foot accessory, untab the front of the car from these grooves, rotate the combiner port so that it is facing outwards, separate the two leg halves, use the spoiler as leverage to open up the leg halves, fold them until they are pointing out. It's easiest to do it one leg at a time. This process will seem familiar to anyone who has a Combiner Wars style car. Fold out this accordion hinge until it is angled upwards, then reclose the leg half. Repeat for both sides. Take these grooves and tabs on the insides of the legs and reclose them together until they click and hold in place. You will see these small tabs on the insides of the robot arms. Take the robot body and slide these tabs into these grooves. Depending on whether or not you want them to be a right or a left arm, rotate the waist joint until the knees slash elbow sections fold in the right direction. Take the prime shield accessory and fold out the fingers. Rotate the thumbs and fold them inwards and down. Then take the peg and angle it upwards. Once that is done, plug the hand into this hole at the base of the car. And here you have Autobot Jazz as an arm module. If you think this shoulder section looks ridiculously huge, you're correct. It juts up quite a bit. But they didn't engineer things enough to do anything with the front car section, so you just kind of have to live with it. But given what they've done with the shoulder sections on others, like Technobot Groove, it may not seem so outrageous after all. Transforming from arm to robot is simplest. Fold the combiner port back down, remove the hand accessory, take the elbow slash leg sections and separate them again. From underneath the car, rotate out the robot feet. Rotate the waist joint so that it is facing forwards. Now you can finally do something about this weird car thing. Rotate the arm sections out from the sides. You will see Jazz's head. Rotate it down and out of the way for a moment. Rotate the car hood down a bit, and it will free up the front of the car enough for you to push it forwards. Angle it upwards, then rotate this section so that it's pointing inwards. Then rotate the whole thing so that it faces forwards and tucks underneath the front of the car hood. Now you may rotate Jazz's head upwards until it's poking out of the top of the hood of the car. Rotate the front of the car downwards. Take the accordion hinge and angle the robot body. It may be hard to see, but there are transparent pegs mounted inside the car body and grooves on top of this section. Plug those together until they hold firmly in place. Be sure to angle the hood section of the car backwards just a little bit to clear up the waist rotation. Rotate the arms until they are facing forwards, and bend the elbows. And here is Autobot Jazz in his robot mode. The gun accessory will plug into either one of the hands, or into these holes on the sides of the arms. You may do the same with the prime armor accessory. Plug it into the hands if you want to, although it works better as a shield if you plug it into the side of the arm. Denied. You may also plug the prime armor into the chest. Rotate the arm peg upwards. Rotate the thumb so that these pegs are facing backwards and in. You may then plug the tabs into these grooves in the front of Jazz's grill work. It doesn't necessarily look like it belongs there, but it's just another feature that you can use if you want to. For articulation, Jazz's head will rotate 360 degrees. The arms are hinged and have a swivel. They are not ball socketed, 
but that is due to the transformation engineering. You can get a wide range of splaying and rotation out of it. It's just different. There is waist rotation, but again, you kind of have to angle the rear section of the windshield out of the way before the waist rotation will clear up. The legs are ball socketed, and you can kick them forwards and backwards easily and splay them in and out. The knees will bend 90 degrees, the feet will tilt backwards as part of the transformation, so you can get a wide range of posing out of Autobot Jazz. <laughs> For size comparison, here is Power of the Prime's Autobot Jazz Deluxe next to Transformers Animated Jazz Deluxe. Here is Power of the Prime's Deluxe Jazz next to Transformers Universe Generations Deluxe Jazz. And here is Power of the Prime's Jazz next to the Utah Jazz. Whichever combiner Jazz is meant to be part of, it will have a good start with Power of the Prime's Jazz. Positives include strong detail and colors, solid articulation, a unique mold, good playability with Prime Masters and Titan Masters, and it supports Combiner Wars Gestalt's to boot. Negatives are the windshield section gets in the way in almost every mode except for the car. There is some hollowness to the robot with chest, and some thinness to the plastic on the body. But all in all, Power of the Prime's Deluxe Jazz still earns 8 out of 10 deaths. He's crazy cool, Daddy O. If you refuse me, honey, you lose me, then you'll be left alone, old baby. Tell him all, and tell me I'm your own.